So welcome to this tutorial. And in this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to use MIDI pin USB interface to connect MIDI controllers and probably other pianos, and also how to set it up on Compact and in several doors like Studio One and also FL Studio. There are several reasons why you might want to use the USB pin interface instead of the conventional USB port. Number one reason is that your keyboard might not have USB port and you might need to use MIDI data. So you might definitely need this USB pin interface. Or if you're someone like me that just prefer using MIDI pin interface to send MIDI data, why well, power my MIDI controller with the USB? For me, I find this method to be much more effective, especially when I'm using heavy compact libraries. There are many MIDI pin USB interface that you could use to interface a keyboard or a piano or a MIDI controller with a system. However, if you don't go for something good, there's high probability it might not function well. In this video, we'll be using the M Audio Uno USB MIDI interface. The first thing I always recommend before connecting any gadget is to go through the manual and see the way they want you to connect it. Most standalone USB MIDI interface will come with the MIDI out and the MIDI in, just like in the case of the MOJ Uno. Also, at the back of a piano or a MIDI interface, most times pianos or keyboard will have the MIDI in, MIDI out, and probably MIDI through. But for MIDI, most times, most of them comes with just MIDI out, while some can also include MIDI in and MIDI true. But in this case, we'll be using the MOGO Oxygen Pro 49, and the MOGO Oxygen Pro 49 just have MIDI out. One good thing about the MOGO Uno USB interface is that they've labeled everything out, the MIDI out and the MIDI in are well labeled. Now, going by the manual, MOJO requires us to connect the MIDI out that is on the Uno USB interface to the MIDI out of the MIDI controller or a keyboard. Some people feel that the inverse should be the case, that is, the MOJO Uno MIDI out should be connected to the in of a keyboard or a MIDI controller and vice versa. However, regardless of what is popularly known, it's important to go through the manual and MOJ has clearly stated it that the MIDI out on the UNO interface should go to the MIDI out of a keyboard or any appliances. So there is no need to argue about that. So once you've connected the MOJ UNO MIDI interface to your keyboard or your MIDI controller, you can connect it to your laptop and the yellow light on the interface is going to pop up. Now, if you are using the MOJO Uno alongside MIDI, it's important to note that you're also going to connect your MIDI via USB or power cable to power it on. Reason being that the MOJO Uno MIDI doesn't provide power. In the next part, we'll move to using this MOJO Uno USB MIDI interface to send MIDI data in contact and also in FL Studio and Studio One. Now, this will be applicable to other doors. You just have to know how to go about the setting and follow the same principle. The first part of this section is to use the MOJO Uno USB interface for standalone plugin like the Contact 7. Now, in this case of Contact, you go to options. Now for every other standalone plugins, they all have their options where you can go to MIDI or audio setting. Now for the audio settings, I won't be doing much. If you want an in-depth tutorial on contact and how to maximize it, there's a video on my channel for that. I'll include the link in the description. Now the major, our major concern is the MIDI. Now definitely, you want to select your audio interface for the audio so that you could hear audio. Now for this MIDI, when you open it most standalone, it might be as off or they might have different setting. But in the case of 
contacts, all the things connected to your system will show. You can see this Oxygen Pro 49. If I select this, it will be using the USB function. But actually, what I want to use is the MOGO Uno USB. Now, it's important to note that this interface is plug and play, but it's advisable to install the driver when needed. For other MIDI interface, like the MOGO Uno interface, they might have their own driver in which it's very, very advisable for you to install to get optimal performance. Now, if I'm to use the MOGO Uno Sport as my MIDI in this case, all I need to do is to come here and from this off, I want to select this as port A. Now, if I play something, you'll actually see it working. Now, the reason why I will try to just compare the two, but for me, I just prefer this because it gives me what I want. Now, this is the ultimate stage piano. There's a video on my channel that I did the sound demo for audio sound, so you could check that out if you want to learn that. Also, so that's how to use the MOG Uno Sports for a standalone plugin or a standalone VST or whatever. In the next part, we'll be moving to how to use it in FL Studio. In this next part, I'll be showing you how to set up the MOG Uno USB in FL Studio. So in FL Studio, you just have to go to Options and MIDI Settings. You must have set your audio correctly. And you just want to activate the MOGO Uno MIDI Spot. So it might be off like this. Just want to click Enable and that should do the magic and you should start working. So if I'm to cancel it now and try to play sound from this expand, it should work. So that's how to go about it in FL Studio. So the last part of this section is how to set up the MOGO Uno MIDI interface in Studio One. Now this is applicable to every other door. The format might just be different. So in Studio One, it's quite simple. You go to Options. It's like everything goes to Options. Then you come to External Device, which is your MIDI. You must have set your audio already. So in Studio One, you want to click on Add. Now when you add, click on Add. You want to click on New Keyboard. Now this new keyboard, you want to just name it as anything, maybe Emoji, whatever, or no or so. Now it will tell you to activate for the various MIDI channel 1 to 16. You can leave this one, but most times I leave it on 1 or 2. The most important part is the Receive From, where you select where this MIDI information is received from. So in this case, you want to set it as MOGO Spot Uno Ini. So let me rename this as Uno New. So this is what you want to do. So you could hard filter, but that's not what we are discussing there. So once you're done with that, you want to click OK. Now when you click OK, here's what you could do. So you want to select this as Uno New. So once you're done with all your settings, now we want to test if it is working properly. So you want to make sure this, your monitoring is on. Then you want to play your keyboard. So we can see that everything is working properly and functioning properly. So the last part is how to map things like the sliders to some specific things in probably contact or any other VST that allow mapping. So welcome to this last part of this 
tutorial and in this part i'll be showing you a bonus tip on how to map things for a library or it could be a vst also so it's always quite easy especially for contact libraries let's say you have this particular library with about eight stones and you just want to map every of these sliders here to it this is also applicable to knobs also so for every midi they have various settings you must do to do that. But for her module, you just have to put this in preset mode and you're good to go. Now for other MIDI, you might not need to do anything called preset. So if you right click on each of these sliders, you see learn MIDI CC and remove MIDI automation. So I'm going to first remove them. Then I'm going to click on learn and move my slider up and down. So it has registered that I'll do it for the second one learn and you know it has registered that remove learn the third one so i keep going so let me click learn so do it for the next one learn remove learn okay this is the sixth one okay let me do it again learn then the next one Remove, learn, remove, and learn. So right now, I've mapped all of these eight voices to this MIDI. So I can take all of them up just by moving these sliders here. After mapping everything to the sliders, so I cannot create my own personal mix. So you get the idea, so you could mess around. So this is also applicable to the knob. So you could click on learn, I know it's going to do it. So you can just follow the same principle and it will work. So if it's also VST, if it has that avenue, you can also do that also. So I think with this, you should be able to maximize the Hemogeo Uno USB for your piano, keyboard, or MIDI controller.